Welcome everybody, one and all. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is Monday, June 27th, and you're watching On Top and Hot. Psst. So today was a real busy day for me. I don't say this often enough, folks, but I make these videos for Titan Trading. Titan Trading is a division of Penny Boys. We're a Discord group that trains the community how to trade. We have professional traders, and I don't say that lightly. These are really professional traders. They are teaching us their methods of how they trade, and each one has got different styles, so it's really great. Well, today we had an open house. Everything was free. Our alerts were free. Everything was free. We even had something like the Jerry Lewis Telethon. You old enough to remember the Jerry Lewis telethon? He <laughs> gets. I am. Well, that was a uh, show that ran for 24 hours once a year. It did not have any commercials and take no breaks. Now, we didn't exactly do that, but we did go from opening bell to closing bell. And it was excellent. We had stream after stream after stream talking to our professional traders, actually seeing live trading going on and them giving us trades to work with. It was fantastic, but it kept me busy today for Folks, I didn't get a chance to actually do a lot of trading or even see what was going on, but I did find some really good stocks that were running today and looked like they're still going to run some more. And I'm going to share those with you in just a minute. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go to site whenever I do research on stocks. Now, it's perfect for OTC. This is for the OTC market and it's updated every day by FINRA and the SEC. You can't beat that, folks. Why go out searching through old information when you know exactly where you're going to find the most current information? But I also use this for the other penny stocks. Penny stocks are any stock under $5, and they can be on any market, not just the OTC. So I will come here, and I will look for penny stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, and I will get information. Now, I'm not going to say it's complete, but it's a great place to start. And if I don't find what I want here, then I can go over to Google and spend my time searching for the information I want. Otherwise, this is my go-to site whenever I start my research. So let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. Dollar volume is up. Look at that, folks. We're at 2.5 billion. We rarely get above 2.1. I have seen it in the last few months a couple of times, but it's very rare. Our trades, about the same, 300,000 right now, and our share volume is holding steady at about 11 billion. We have crossed over the double digits. We haven't been in double digits for about 60 days, I guess, something like that. And we're holding it. We're not growing today, but we're holding, and that's okay. We want to see that volume maintain and not fall if it's not growing, but the growth is what's really going to help us. All right, let's go take a look at the first stock. These stocks, we're not going to dive into real deep. I'm going to show you a little bit about them, and we're going to look at what has got them running and look at those charts because that's really what this is all about. We want to find some money in these charts. So let's jump on over to the first one right now. So the first stock we're going to take a look at is ticker USCS. This is US Core. Finished the day at 0 .0137 with 211% gains, folks. Incredible. Yes, she did have news today. And there was a catalyst in that news. But you wouldn't have known it by the headlines. You would have to actually go into the news press to see it. And I'm going to show it to you here in just a second. She's on the pink tier. She is current. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent. Now, this is worth repeating. I say it over and over again, but make sure, especially on a pink, that you see these two green tick marks. Pinks are notorious for not having a lot of verified information, and that's what you really want, and that's what this is, verified information. Now, I'm not sure everything that's entailed with it, but the OTC market is validating this information behind the scenes, and when they pass everything, this is what they get. So we want to see that, especially on a pink. All OTC stocks, but especially on a pink. This is a shell company. They've got nothing going on right now. They're just empty like a house waiting for a tenant to move in. They're looking for a deal. Want to guess what the news was today? So what was the relative volume around this company? Well, she normally does 37,000 shares a day. Today, she did 2.6 million. So there was a strong kick up in the volume for sure. Her float, we're looking at the unrestricted shares. This is the best place to get your float. They will list the float here, but don't trust this number. I know, I tell you to trust this site. But experience has told me this is one line of information you should just avoid. And if you're going to use it, go verify it. But 
Restricted shares, that is as close to the float as you're going to get. So we got 164 million. Let's call it 165 million in this stock. Financials, they got nothing. There are no disclosures. So let's bounce on over into that news. So here's the headlines. USCS 2022 half year update right? You'd see that and you just go right on by it. Who's got time to dive into every generic headline? So you wouldn't have seen this information, but I took the time to dive in. So they tell us here, U.S. Corps and Princess International Limited are in final discussions to enter into a memorandum of understanding to be formalized by a joint venture agreement to build an internationally acclaimed brand in beauty and wellness called Princess Elite. Princess Elite plans to establish its first flagship store in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. The Princess Elite initiative was met with warm welcomes by various stakeholders in the UAE and had subsequently been invited to establish their first flagship store in the prestigious Dubai Mall, the world's biggest shopping center situated in downtown Dubai with over 1 million square meters of floor space. That's equivalent to 200 soccer fields. The Chinatown section of Dubai Mall is scheduled for grand opening by the end of 2022 with Princess Elite Global and these two other companies as anchor tenants. The Princess Elite store plans to feature the biggest in-shop LED panel delivering 24-hour promotional and entertainment contents while also premiering luxurious 24-karat golden product display pedestals. 24 karat gold pedestals. So they're putting a lot of money into this place. U.S. Corps and Princess International plans to jointly invest over $10 million into the Princess Elite venture. Investors and strategic partners are invited to join U.S. Corps in the celebration of this grand opening and crucial milestone in December 2022. So if you're not doing anything in December of this year, they'd love to have you over in Dubai to help celebrate this grand opening. Just remember, no holding hands or kissing in Dubai. That's actually a jailable offense, no public affection. So there's your catalyst, folks. There is a joint venture going down for a new beauty wellness product, Princess Elite, and it's going to be in the largest mall in the world, and it's going to be pretty grandeur, if you ask me. So let's go take a look at that chart. So we're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. I got it when I signed up for my free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. So if you don't have a trading platform, you just like to have a backup in case Weevil gets all messed up one day, all you got to do is sign up for their free trading account and keep your account open. They're not even going to ask for any money, so it's really easy. Keep your account open and voila, you got yourself another trading platform to back up your Weeble. So we are looking at ticker USCS. This is a six month, four hour chart. She had a high back here of about 5.3 cents and a low maybe a week ago of 0018. She has predominantly been under the 200, trying to hang on to the 50. And just today, she has broke the 50 and is pushing in on the 200. Our technicals are screaming hot right now, folks. Everything is literally pointing up and up at the high point. And our MACD has just touched the signal line, which is a sign of power. So everything looks really, really good here. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view, see how it's looking. So on 20 day view, we had a low of 0023. So she's already coming off of her low bubble. She went sideways here until, what is this? Three days ago. Three days ago, she started to push up a little bit, went sideways yesterday and today rocketed up. Technicals, the MACD is screaming, RSI is on fire. CCI is above the green line. Now we want to be above the green line. I've got it colored. Now the CCI, is called the Commodity Channels Index. And what it basically does is it compares the price of right now to the prices right behind it and measures how fast they're moving apart. And this shows that it was moving apart. When it gets above the third line, it's moving fast and you're getting some really good gains. But if the arrow starts to push down, it does start to slow down just like that. Let's look at our five day, five minute. Wow, took up the whole screen just to get that chart on there. So there's your jump yesterday. She went from that low bubble of 0026 up to 
0047. So you've got roughly 75% gains just yesterday, right? That's just a little bounce, 75% gains. Then you have this bounce, which went from that 0043 up to a penny and a half, almost a penny six. And she fell down here to a penny point three. Well, she was almost at 240% gains right there, and she finished the day at 211%. So it was a great day for this company for news that was hidden inside. Now, we've only got two SMAs on this board. We got our 20 and our 10, and it has come down to the 20 right now. Technicals are a little weak on the MACD. We had a crossover when she started to fall, as you would expect, and she is underneath. RSI has pulled back a wee bit. It is now in the high 50s. We'd like to see it at least in the 60s. And our CCI has taken a tremendous drop. The red is the danger zone. Yellow is neutral. Green is good. I color-coded mine. You go get yours, it's going to be white. But you can change the colors if you like. So this, to me, looks like it's got some potential still left in it. I would keep my eyes on this. Now, the volume doesn't show anything promising. Technicals are still warm. There's still some hot embers sitting here. So I would put this on your uh, watch list for tomorrow, USCS, and watch the volume on this. There is a very good chance that this could fly. I don't know how big the news is, but it is Dubai. It is a new, expensive beauty product. I mean, gee whiz, they're putting it on a 24 karat gold pedestal just to show it off. So, uh, you know, this could be surprising. So keep your eyes on it. We don't know what's going to happen, but you don't want to miss it if it does. Let's go look at the, the next stock we're taking a look at here is EVFM. This is on the NASDAQ, and there was hardly any information over at the OTC market, so I didn't see any reason to start there. So we're going to start here. Any old page will work for me. I just want you to get the basic information. So. FOFM Biosciences was first brought to my attention before the bell. And I went and looked at the chart and oh my God, was it tearing it up pre-market. So I did what I always do and I went and looked for the catalyst. There was no news. There was no findings. I could not find a catalyst. I went to Twitter. I couldn't find anything there. So I had no clue. Didn't figure it out until halfway through the day. And I'll tell you what that was there in just a minute. So as you probably have noticed, it's still moving. It's getting aftermarket activity as well. She is at $1.27, finished the day at 18, 19% gains, but it was definitely a lot higher in the middle of the day. And I expect more gains to be coming. Her volume was 23 million today. I don't know what her average volume is. I'm not used to this page. And her float, they don't actually list the float here, but they do list the outstanding share count, 14 and a half million. So you know the float is less than that. So it is a low float. So what does this company do? Well, once I tell you what they do, you're probably going to figure out why it's running. Evofam Biosciences Inc. is a commercial stage biopharmaceutical company. It is engaged in developing and commercializing products to address unmet needs in women's sexual reproductive health, including hormone-free, woman-controlled contraception and protection. And there it is, folks, contraception. Fact of the matter is the Supreme Court's ruling on Roe versus Wade is going to change a lot more than just how we handle unwanted births. This is going to change the market for a lot of different products and services, and it's probably going to be long lasting because this law changes it across the whole country, right? Right now, so everybody is affected, and we don't know how this is going to play out. But a lot of contraception companies are running right now because they're going to be getting more business, and that's exactly why this is running. And with Judge Thomas, he just made a comment the other day about contraception. He's doing something there, and he's going to be the catalyst. That man's going to be the catalyst. When he talks, you better look at this stock because it could run that day. But I think these could run this week, next week. This may run next month because this is going to be a long, ongoing thing. So let me show you what I saw on the chart first thing this morning. Wow, folks, you're never going to believe this. Over there at the CNBC site where we were just at, it told us that we were at about 18.7% uh, gains. No, we're not. They put a decimal point in there. We didn't need it. It's at 187% gains. A little different than 18 and a half, don't you think? 
So we are looking at EVFM. This is a six month, four hour chart as usual. Six months ago, we were at $11.62 and we just hit a low about a week ago of 27 cents. She was under the 200, cracked it here in the middle, held it for a while steady, and then fell really hard down here and has been bottom lining, flat lining, comatose right here until today. Today she is tearing it up, folks. I see our 200 hull is starting to turn up, which is a lot like the 200 day SMA. 200 day SMA just takes 200 days, averages them all together. Boom, there's your number. But the 200 hull does the same thing, then gives a little more credence to the current prices. So there, you normally find this line is a little closer to the price, and it is now turning up. And speaking about turning up, wow, look at that MACD, folks. That is a tsunami blowing off the beach. We have got lots of fire in the sky. Lightning bolt, look at that. And we are above the third line on the CCI. This looks really good. And the volume, well, look here, folks. There is smidges of volume in here. These last two days, the volume has picked up. The last two days without any catalyst. I really think you need to be watching this, folks. She came off of this coma line, broke the 50, shot through the 200, and is still barreling away right now after hours. So look at that 20 day, one hour view. There's your flat line. Here's our 200 day came in and it is now starting to turn up. Everything is looking great here, folks. Oh my God, look at that. She is screaming, folks. Everything is in exactly the right place. If this was the day, if we were trading right now, I'd be jumping in. Even if it had that huge run, that tells me it's got more to give. Wow, I really like this one. Five day, five minute. So there's your jump yesterday, which wasn't all that big, but let's measure that. We went from 32 cents up to 48 cents. So you grabbed about 33% gains yesterday. There was the jump I saw this morning. That's what I saw. She had jumped here from 40 cents up to 82 cents. She had already had 100% gains when I had peeked at her and didn't have a clue why she was running. Started to fall here, looked like it was the end of the day, end of the game for it, and then it took off again. And it is riding up that 50 bouncing off of it very securely. I like this stock, folks. The uh, Technicos here, God, we still got fire, still got that raging tsunami, and we are still near the third line, though it is now pointing down. But remember, we got activity right now. She has not stopped. Everything is still going. She is, look at that, you can see there is activity. So I, again, like I said with the last one, I would put this on your watch list for tomorrow, the next day, the next day, and the next day. I would keep EVFM on your watch list because I get a feeling this could have bounces every other day. It could have a run and just not stop for a while. Of course, it's gonna hit a ceiling somewhere. I'm not saying, you know, don't look for the ceiling. I'm saying take the money and run. When it falls, starts to rise again, get in again. Nobody says you only have to play it once. If it wants to start to bounce because it hits a high that nobody wants to go above, it may come back down, catch another piece of Judge Thomas talking and start to run again. And you can get into it another time and make another pocket full of cash. I am really liking EBFM. Do some research. Check out some other contraceptive companies out there. We're now taking a look at an Australian biotech, I guess you'd call them, and they had news come out today, and it was pretty impressive. This is Imugene Limited, ticker IUGNF. Finished the day just a smidge over 18 cents and almost 64% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, but she does not have either one of those green ticks I tell you to look for. However, in saying that, when you're doing a day trade or a short swing trade, this information really doesn't come into play. As a matter of fact, the CEO could get arrested. If you're in a day trade and it's running up, it doesn't matter what the bad news is. If that stock is running, you're not gonna be around long enough to worry about the downfall because you're gonna take your money and get out once it does. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us that they're a clinical stage immuno-oncology company that is developing a range of new treatments that seek to activate the immune system of a cancer patient to identify and eradicate tumors. That sounds pretty bloody impressive to me. So what was the relative volume of the company today? That's not too impressive. It is double though. It is 100% increase from 650,000 to 1.2 million. 
Share structure, what is the float? Well, we got no information here whatsoever. All right, I'm gonna go look this up for you. If I find any numbers, I'll put those right up there. If I don't, I'll just put question marks up there. Financials, we got nothing over here, and I don't believe there's any disclosures either. I think they're filing in their own country. It's not that they're not filing. That's not why they're not here. They just have their own country that they can file into. So what is the news today? So this is the news that came out today, and I am really happy they wrote it in simple terms. See folks, the truth of the matter is, I don't normally cover biotechs and biopharmas. Not because I don't think they can make you any money. They certainly can, especially when you catch the news presses that come out with results at certain phase trials. Outside of that, well, <laughs> it's those bloody PRs. They are really difficult to read, hard to understand, and nearly impossible to explain to you. And if I try, I only end up looking stupid. So <laughs> I don't do it. But as I said, this one was written in real simple terms. So we are going to take a look at this. Immugene records positive final safety and efficacy data from phase two trial targeting gastric cancer. Now they tell us right down here that the longer you use their drugs, the longer people are living. They are adding more time onto their life. The average is 2.5 years with three years being the maximum for the person who's been on the drug the longest. Now for people who have gastric cancer, that is a pretty big deal. You want to live as long as you can. Now, it's not a cure, obviously, but if somebody could buy you two to three more years, wouldn't you take it? Absolutely, you would. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it's looking like for tomorrow. Standard operating procedure, six month, four hour chart for IUGNF. And we got a high back here of almost 47 cents and a low a few days ago at about eight and a half cents. Obviously, under the 200 and the 50, all of this time falling down. Hit this low bubble, and it looks like we had a bounce back there. Oh, wow. Look at all that volume, folks. Now, I'm going to presume, this is just an educated guess, that this was the actual period where the information came out about this phase two trial. I think this was just an article. That's it. But we got a huge jump off of that article, didn't we? She came off of this low bubble and crushed the 50 and is right now just about ready to break the 200-day SMA. All the technicals are really hot. We do have a slight pullback on the CCI, but everything is up at the high points. 20-day, one-hour view. Falling underneath the 50 till it hit that low bubble. Looks like it actually bounced off the low bubble, that it was its catalyst. Climbed up here, almost hit the 200, which has just come into the picture, and today she ripped it. Ripped through the 200, paid no mind to it. Technicals are really strong. I see the CCI is taking a strong dip, but you sure can't see it by looking at the price, can you? Five day, five minute. Wow, that is beautiful. Well, there's no need to draw my top and bottom line and see if she's kept 50%. We don't need to do that. But she moved in 15 minutes to her high and virtually kept that high all day long. So she went up to 63%, 60% and stuck it out right there. Now to me, it looks like she's already sitting on the 20. Looks like she's waiting for this 50 day SMA to catch up to the price. Now the price could fall down to the 50 or it can just hang on up there and let the 50 come to it. Technicals, well, look at this folks. We had a crossover right here. You can see the crossover right there, negative crossover, but you don't see any fall here. The price may be a smidge, but really, come on, that did not fall. The MACD continues to fall all the way down here while the price is holding up. We got a divergence. It's getting wider and wider between the two. Normally, they go the same direction, don't they? Right? And this is getting wider and wider, like a fish opening up its mouth to eat another fish. And that is taking profits. There's a very good likelihood this could continue growing because of this divergence. Looks like we got an imminent crossover right there. She's about to come up and she's already over the signal line. We are in the low 60s on the RSI. You want to at least be in the 60s. And we're above the neutral line. Though it looks like she's falling at this very second. I think she's going to turn around and get a little more. Now, in saying that, this is a biotech company. And I see a lot of biotechs that once they grab their gains, just go straight line. Just go flat. That's it. They found the value of it. They've done their math. They know what it's worth. And they won't do anything more. 
But when I say that, I just saw that long chart over here, and I don't see any flatlining. Everything is falling, 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 falling. Now, if you go back and find the next biggest bar of volume, you may find that was the last time they had news come out on one of their drugs. But the way it looks to me, folks, it looks like it's worthy of putting on your watch list. IUGNF. If it doesn't do anything, no harm done, right? Now, I got the feeling that those three stocks have still got some profits and gains to give us, but you're going to have to watch them, folks. It could be tomorrow, could be next week. Now, there was one other stock I did want to show you, but there really isn't anything to show you so I can tell you. Last week, ticker ELMS filed for bankruptcy, and while it was on the NASDAQ, it was getting some bounces from that news. Well, today they got yanked off the NASDAQ and put onto the pink tier of the OTC. Their new ticker is ELMSQ. They put a Q on the back to represent a bankruptcy. Now, I think it's important to realize that it's on the OTC because OTC investors treat bankruptcies a little bit differently than they do the major exchange. So I'm expecting some silly, crazy activity on this, just like they did on Hertz, just like they did on Revlon. I would keep my eye on this company for some fast bounces out of nowhere. E-L-M-S-Q. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.